Now that you have your pieces, it's time to go into the drill press. Uh, drill press is relatively cheap. You can buy them probably about 70 bucks. I am telling you right now, it's probably one of the best investments that you can get. Uh, if you can get it cheaper or for free, even better. Uh, it breaks down into time and it also helps with the drilling. Um, <clears throat> I'm using 11 by 62 uh, drill bit. Um, you can use any type of size you feel that's necessary. I like to go for medium sized uh, bits, but I also know that some people go for, sm I tried smallers, they work fine. Uh, larger though, I think you might be pushing it. Only time I would suggest if you're to go larger is that if you're going to be riveting the scales onto the back, onto your backing. Um, me, I'm not going to rivet it. I'm going for an old style here of like w what they did uh, in the uh, dark ages. That's what I was trying to say. So, first thing that you got to do is I was taught this technique by someone. They told me that to save the drill bit, you want to put a little oil on the drill, on the drill bit itself. It helps keep it from dulling down. I don't know how true it is, but I do it anyway just for the sake of it and just to make sure that my drill bits can stay. Um, I haven't really, I haven't, I have actually seen them, that they actually do last a bit longer. Um, also, they'll be warned, you will see a little smoke coming out of it. Don't worry, I haven't caught fire yet, so there's no real harm. So, what you want to do is, this is where those punch, those holes come involved. It will guide me with putting the hole, helping the drill to find the proper place where I wanted them. have our holes we're gonna have to get rid of all this excess pieces of metal that are sticking out because after the drilling because of that I'm using a countersink um, mainly because I'm using uh, yarn to put it onto the backing uh, this will help keep it from fraying as much and more or less the yarn breaking and then the pieces of metal just falling off of the armor of the backing I should say. Uh, if you're using rivets you don't have to do this um, but like I said I'm using yarn so I have to do it. This is a this is a step that can be totally ignored um, so but I'm just going to show it to you anyway so that if you decide to use yarn or rope or uh, thread to hold it to the backing um, you, you might want to do this to prolong the life of everything. All right, so now that we got this, the edge, the ends, the backs smoothed out, we've still got the sharp ends here that we have to worry about. Because of that, we're gonna have to use, we're gonna use a bench grinder, the bristles, on, the bristle brush on the side to dull the ends and make them, so, make them so that you can actually wear it without fearing of slicing yourself. So. As you can see, the edges are now smoothed off, so now you don't have to really worry about getting yourself cut. Uh, I would suggest you do both sides. That way it's definitely, might definitely dulled, and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so this is down to your, down to the final, the final stretch of how to make scale mail. As you can see, I already start working on some of these pieces onto a piece here. And as you can see, the backing isn't really authentic. It's denim. But like I said, you, to make this stuff relatively easy and inexpensive, because it's being hidden behind the metal, no one's really going to be paying attention to the fact that it's denim. 
Um, so what you want to do though is this: is first you want to get a piece of copper wire. I'm using copper wire. I should rephrase that. I'm using copper wire. Copper wire is not necessary. You can use regular wire. Uh, you can use, um, but you do need a metal a metal type of metal wire to hold the pieces of scale mail together. So what you want to do is you want to cut it at a reasonable length. Now bend it so that it becomes as this, as such. Now get the piece that you were working on. Make sure that you have the the counter, the smooth end in the back. Okay, you want to line it up, stick it through. Take this, match them up. Okay, now that you have them matched up, what you want to do is grab the, the end and twist them once or twice, giving enough free movement for the scales. Because I found out that if you tie them too hard, the scales won't move. You're going to have a hard time moving around in them, and also the copper wiring will snap on you. And then it, the pieces will start falling apart on you. So once you have that, once you have it turned a couple of times, you want to push the edges in towards the metal, and then kind of bend them so that they're, so that the ends are not going to be sticking into you. All right. So now here's the final piece. Okay. So you have, as you can see, you have a rope running through it. This rope kind of works as a ruler to help keep you everything to help keep everything straight because if you don't keep it straight right away the whole entire thing is you're going to if you don't keep it straight it will start diverging and at first it may not seem a lot but as you progress upwards it becomes more and more prominent to the point where it's it's totally and utterly useless so what you want to do with this is make sure that the pieces are straight out Everything is straight. Like you want to just, you want to look at it. You want to be sure that it's all, it's perfectly, it is, it is flush like that. So the pieces stay in a relatively straight form. Then you have a piece of yarn through, and this is what's going to hold the scales to the backing. As you can see, I have a long piece here, and it's doubled, so I don't have to do. So I only can, I only have to go through once, and not a couple of times, to make sure it's really stuck on there. All right. So now, once you have it strained out, yeah, gotta dig around till you find where you want it, which is a pain in the butt, but you know, you just gotta work on it. You want to go through slowly but surely. You also got to watch out with a long piece of string. Sometimes it wraps around itself and it becomes and it becomes entangled on itself. So you go through once, then you go through the second time from the back, through the front. I meant. You go through. Go through. Okay. So now that you have it tied in. You pull it once, so you tighten this last one to the back, and you tighten that one. All right. Now, though, that you have it set up like that, what you want to do now, you don't want to tighten this one on right off the bat. What you want to do is you want to get the next one, put that on, then tighten it, and then put then sew this one into that into that. And you just proceed to go and just keep going up and up and up and up until you finally have a complete suit of scale mail. And there you go. And that's how you make and that's how you can make a suit of scale mail for yourself. Um, enjoy.